bit of filth and fibble exposed and for the first time this year I'm actually very sick so just still decide to post anyways but just bear with me my voice does sound a little bit different so anyways in this episode I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of torso dominance because in my last neck video that I posted a lot of you guys were criticizing my arm size saying that my arms looked very small and even if they're 16 and a half inches they don't look big so in this episode I'm going to elaborate on the, the pros and cons of torso dominance because I'm definitely a torso dominant lifter and hopefully by the end of this video you're going to understand I'm going to post a lot of pictures on the screen and to educate. So first things first I know you guys are probably thinking what is torso dominance? Well there's torso dominant and there's limb dominant. Torso dominant is when you know your chest, your upper back, your lats, maybe a bit of your delts, traps and just muscles of that nature are just overshadowing the arms whereas if you're limb dominant you know you have huge forearms huge triceps huge biceps but you have more of like a narrow frame and it's just you have bigger looking arms okay, so as far as torso dominance is concerned I want to talk about the genetic factor because a lot of people have certain genetic factors that are gonna make them a lot more torso dominant than the average person so the main things is rib cage size and clavicle length and also clavicle shape so a lot of people who are torso dominant tend to have extremely large rib cages. I'll post a picture on the screen, but a big rib cage is basically going to make you look a lot thicker. It's going to make your chest to back, upper back uh, thickness look a lot bigger than the average person, and this is going to make you really torso dominant. Another thing is clavicle length and also clavicle uh, angles. So, a lot of there's different forms of clavicles. You know, there's you got the horizontal ones, you got the diagonal ones, and basically if you have horizontal clavicles, you're going to be a lot more torso dominant over the person who has diagonal clavicles because diagonal, they go on an angle, which I'll talk about in the later in the video, but horizontal clavicles, they have their pros and cons. Okay, so one of the main benefits to having a more torso dominant physique is that one, you have more potential for more muscle mass. If you were to compare a four-story house to a two-story house, obviously you could fit more stuff in a four-story house. And this applies the same way to torso dominant versus like limb dominant. If you're torso dominant, your upper back is going to be a lot wider. You have wider clavicles, you're mostly going to have some bigger delts. You have a wide chest, you have bigger lats, and just more potential for muscle mass. And the majority of your muscle mass is in your upper body. And there's a lot in your legs too, but there's not that much muscle mass in your arms. So you can imagine how these kinds of lifters have a lot of potential for size but also a lot of potential for strength. So if you look at a lot of the strongest lifters in the world, a lot of these guys tend to be uh, more torso dominant. And as far as benefits for strength, you know, uh, if you were to talk about a squat, you know, if you have a wider frame, you have a bigger upper back, it's heavier weight that you could you could um, load in your upper back and there's just tons of benefits. If you're a bencher, you know, you're extremely wide, you're extremely thick, you're going to have a better base for pressing and the list goes on. Another benefit to being torso dominant is that it is gonna make you look leaner as opposed to a guy who has a really narrow frame and who's like really short. They're just gonna look really stocky and if they go to a higher body fat, they, they're gonna look fatter than the guy who's uh, more torso dominant. Because when you're torso dominant, you have more of a V-shape going on. So you could have a bigger waist, but the fact that your, your delts and your upper back are so big, you could get away with being at a slightly higher body fat percentage. I know you guys are probably thinking, wow, Phil, there's so many benefits to being a torso dominant lifter. What could possibly be wrong with this type of body? And I'd personally rather be a torso dominant lifter as well, but there's still some downsides that come with the territory. And the first downside is that from a proportion standpoint, your arms are not gonna look as big as they really could due to their proportions. So. A lot of people have decent sized arms or even above average sized arms but because they're so torso dominant because they have so many muscle groups that are basically overshadowing their arms, their arms are not going to look as big as they really could. So if you were to take a lifter like Nick Wright who has already admitted that he has a narrow frame, you'll notice that he has extremely big arms and he obviously has big arms to begin with but the fact that his frame is more narrow, the proportions are basically in his favor. So you're going to notice that with narrow lifters, they tend to have a lot of bigger looking arms because the space between their oblique and their arm is more narrow. Whereas if you have a guy who's more torso dominant, there's a bigger space, there's a bigger gap between their oblique and their arm. So there's like 
this many inches and next thing you know even if they have some decent arms what ends up happening is it it just looks like they have these big sticks hanging out of the shoulder sockets so there's this big gap and it's not really playing in their favor. The main reason why being torso dominant makes your arms look a lot smaller is because torso dominant lifters tend to have huge backs so if you were to look at my back go on instagram pg.coaching you're going to notice in my back posing videos that my lats are basically dwarfing my tricep long head and if there's anything about the tricep long head i've been talking about it for months it's the meat and potatoes of the upper arm that's the, really what's going to make your upper arm look huge but if you already have huge lats on your physique it's basically going to make your long head not look so impressive even though it may have a pretty decent amount of development so from the back view your triceps aren't going to look that crazy and also from the side view if you have a really thick upper back your lateral and medial head of your triceps are not going to look as impressive because your upper back is pretty much going to be dwarfing it. Also, a lot of torso dominant guys tend to have really big chests. If you have a big set of pecs, next to your biceps, it's not going to make it look like you have the biggest guns around either. And basically just having a big torso in general, it's not really going to make it look like you have the biggest arms around. Another important thing to add on to my point is that most torso dominant lifters are going to add a lot more size to their torso in a year than they will in their arms. So the majority of people aren't going to add an inch to their arms every single year, especially when they're drug free. But you could easily add an inch to your shoulder circumference in a year if you really wanted to. You could probably add a few inches because the lats, the upper back, the pecs, the delts have a lot more potential for growth. So clearly you can see that your upper back and your torso is just growing at a way faster rate than your arms are. And over time, it's going to be, become more and more apparent. And I'm a perfect testimonial of this. My, my lats and my upper back, with all these crazy snatch grip lifts I'm doing, it's just skyrocketing in size and my arms aren't skyrocketing at the same rate. So it's pretty much just going to keep getting worse and worse unless if I just take my arm training a lot more seriously, which is what I have been doing. So another point to add on to the arm segment of this video is that a lot of torso dominant lifters tend to have very bad activation and mind muscle connection in the biceps and triceps. What do I mean by this? Well, it's very common for torso dominant lifters to do weighted chin ups or just body weight chin ups and only feel the weight in their lats and only get growth and stimulation in their lats as opposed to the biceps. Or when they do close grip benching or heavy weighted dips, they feel the weight mostly in their shoulders bit in their pecs and pretty much nothing in the triceps and I know that this is true for me no matter what kind of dips I do for the most part I mostly feel it in my delts and this is because the most dominant muscles are basically going to take over and uh, that's just the way it is so a lot of torso dominant lifters tend to have this problem and this exaggerates the issue even more so now the dominant muscles are going to grow even faster and on top of that the dominant muscles have more potential for growth because they're bigger and that's why it could be a recipe for disaster if you're trying to grow some bigger arms. Okay, last but not least, there's one more downside to being torso dominant. This doesn't apply to everybody, so it depends on your insertions. But for the most part, a lot of torso dominant guys who tend to have these very long clavicles. It tends to make their neck and traps look a lot skinnier. So if you have a really wide frame, what's going to end up happening is that by comparison, your neck isn't going to look as yoked. And also, if you have horizontal clavicles, they don't go on up on a more of a pyramid angle. So your traps by comparison aren't gonna look super stacked. Yeah, so there you guys have it. Those are the pros and cons of being a torso dominant lifter. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned something. Apologize for my voice, I'm a bit sick. But nonetheless, it's not the most conventional video out there, but it's something that had to be addressed. And if you guys are curious, I personally think that the torso dominant lifter still remains on top. He's going to look bigger, he's going to look stronger, but he does have to bring up his arms. He does have to bring up his tricep long head especially, but when this individual does that, he's going to be unstoppable as far as drug-free lifters are concerned. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Let me know if I forgot any pros or any cons. Let me know what are you. Are you a torso dominant guy? Are you a limb dominant individual? I want to know in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.